Professor Tilly, Professor Barkov, Professor Freimuth, and Professor Wessels. The idea of this lecture originated during last semester's international lectures, which were dedicated to Turkey. And uh, in the final session, Professor Wessels, who, in addition to being a Jean Monnet chair and expert on European affairs, is also the head of University of Cologne's Center for Turkey and EU Studies, CETOIS, and an expert in Turkish affairs. Professor Wessels had given a lecture on narratives of Turkey and Europe, both in the EU and in Turkey. The outcome was, at the bottom line, strikingly simple. We learned that the Turkish narrative was based on the conviction that Turkey was a European power since 1453 when the Turks conquered Byzantium, while the European master narrative was overshadowed by the general opinion that Turkey since 1529, when the Turks besieged Vienna for the first time, was an essentially anti-European power. Thinking it over, I got the impression that it might be similarly surprising to look into the European narratives of proven European member states. And that's where the idea for narratives of Europe, narratives for Europe, originated. Now, I understand that the concept of narratives within political science has a particular analytical and methodological meaning and function, and Professor Wessels will tell us more about it in a minute. <coughs> However, uh, I am not a political scientist, I'm a historian, and from a historical perspective, the concept of narratives reminds me of an intriguing concept that had been popular some time ago among historians, and that is the idea of invented traditions. The idea that traditions, that is traditional cultural practices, rites, customs, and traditional convictions, in many cases are not at all centuries old and shaped by generations of traditionalists, but rather freshly invented exactly to make people believe that certain views and ideas were grown and cultivated over ages and therefore undebatable. Historians have shown that many features of, for example, national culture were actually invented to make nations appear like eternal communities or to trace back a national culture over millennia, while they were actually quite recently compilated or canonized as such. Hence, traditions quite often are constructed truths. Attention, not entirely fake truths. Research has shown that not any tradition can be invented, but only traditions which resonate in the public sphere, which find acceptance because they hit a nerve of the historical moment and of people's minds. So narratives, from a historical point of view, are similarly constructed truths. They are based on a more or less conscious selection of historical events and memories, on a particular interpretation of political, social, and economic developments, and on images and emotions created by them. They are simplifications or even oversimplifications of one possible way of interpreting a given historical situation. And they evolve over time according to the leading or mainstream interpretation, and they may change to the worse or to the better, depending on one's political stance. So what is important, at least to me, they are man-made and they can be changed. The best way to deprive them of their manipulative power is to debate them, to discuss their roots and origins. Some narratives may stand the test. Others may become weak once we understand their construction. In any case, knowing about these narratives in the single member states will certainly help to better understand each other in Europe. That is what this lecture series is about, to increase mutual understanding among Europeans and to accept a variety of views on one and the same European integration process. As of next week, oh, sorry, as of next week, every Tuesday we will be welcome two experts from different EU member states and learn more about narratives of and for Europe in their countries. The program follows more or less the <coughs> timeline of accessions of these states, starting with the founders, France, Germany, Italy, and the Benelux countries, and finishing with Croatia and two of the accession states, uh, accession candidates, Serbia and Turkey. I'd like to express my warmest gratitude to all speakers who accepted to participate in this series. None of them is paid. Many had to shift other obligations to be able to come to Cologne or to connect via web conferencing. And all are participating out of personal commitment to the European cause. 
My thanks also goes, of course, to the Coimbra Group, in particular to its president, Professor Ludwig Tilly, and to Vice President, Professor Jürgen Barkov, who both gave this project their full support and made it a priority cause, as did Rector Professor Axel Freimuth from the University of Cologne. A particular welcome to Krakow's Jagiellon University and to the University of Granada, where this session and all following lectures are being broadcast live to a whole lecture hall. And finally, I want to thank my colleagues Beate fossel newman for solving many tricky technical questions and Frank Hasenstab for art direction and communications. Both are absolutely vital for the success of this undertaking. I'm now looking forward to a truly European lecture series and would like to invite Professor Wessels to the stage. Professor Wessels is a long-standing expert of European affairs, editor of the Yearbook of European Integration, author of many monographs on European issues, most recently a study on the European Council, and editor of myriads of anthologies and readers. In Cologne, he is known as Mr. Europe, not only for his expertise, but also for his unprecedented ability to compete for and raise European funding. He has been leading numerous EU-funded research projects and, what is more, always finished them in time and with notable results. <laughs> One final organizational indication, everyone following this lecture, here in Krakow, in Granada or elsewhere, can participate live by sending an email with comments or questions to this email address, and I write it on the blackboard as well in a minute. We will collect your contribution and forward it to the chat section and base the concluding discussion on it. So whoever wants to participate also here in the room and has a question or a comment to make, do it by email, use your smartphones. It's usually not allowed in lectures, but in this case, we even encourage it and send your comments and questions and we will discuss, take them for the discussion at the end of the session. Thank you very much, Professor Wessels. I'm preparing your slides and then the, sure, the stage is yours. <laughs>